JB set. Pretty straightforward, pretty readable, pretty to the point, nice opposing passages. Let's take a look at why these answers are right. For number 22, something that both passages do, and for answer to a C, can the flat tax be fair? I mean, we start that in line one of passage one and continue all the way through passage A. And then in line uh, 53 of passage B at the very end, we really address that head on. Flat tax proposals are supposed to bring the same total amount, so it's going to break the back of the middle class. Clearly, both of them concerned with whether or not a flat tax is fair. 23. How do both passages seek to advance their arguments? Well, in line 17, you have author A doing it. Uh, flat tax seems to draw this in principle. Not so. In line 36, you have author B doing it. Um, people in higher brackets don't pay the higher rate on their entire income. Both of them correct these alleged misunderstandings. We don't know whether anybody really misunderstood those things, but the authors allege people to have. And then they correct them. 24. I want to support the position of passage B over A. And the passage B is that the burden is going to fall at the end of the passage. The burden is going to fall on the middle class. And if I want to support that, tell me that it's happened. Tell me that in countries where we went to a flat tax, middle income taxpayers do tend to pay higher taxes. I mean, it just plain says the position. So if that's true, that's an awful lot of good support. For 25, something that A argues for but B does not. And notice that two of these answers B does address. In line 49, it's B talks about answer choice A. In line 33, B talks about answer choice E. And the author of passage A never says anything about um, uh, higher taxes inhibiting investment and economic growth. And while the author of A says something about flat tax proposals not being practical, she's not arguing for that, she's arguing against that. However, passage A does argue that the flat tax will make it harder for the high income earners to avoid their taxes. And passage B just never says anything about that. So there's our answer. For question 26, what do they disagree over? Well, how do we know the answer is B? Because in line 27, the author says, it's unsurprising that high income earners pay about as much. In line 56, high income earners are going to pay less. They disagree about whether high income earners will pay less. Finally then, question 27, how does B respond to A? When A says that flat tax is better because it will remove the progressive tax incentive and um, enabling of high income earners to cheat. How could B respond to that? Well, for A, it's all about how the progressive tax is both enabling and inducing high income earners. So if you told me in answer choice B, that it's not the progressive tax that enables and induces the cheating, but instead the loopholes and special deductions, then that's a pretty powerful, that's, if that's true, that's a pretty powerful statement against the argument that it is a progressive tax that causes the high income earners to cheat. It's not the type of tax, it's the enforcement of the tax. By the way, for answer choice A, um, saying that they could still cheat um, under a flat tax by underreporting doesn't hold any water because, yeah, that's true. They could cheat by, by underreporting, but they can still do that under a progressive tax. So, I mean, that's not uh, an argument against the flat tax. That may be an argument against any possible tax, but... It doesn't argue against the flat, and it doesn't argue in favor of the progressive in the way that B does, because it's not the progressive tax that's the problem. It's the enforcement of it with all those loopholes and special deductions. That finishes this passage, and that finishes this section.